Biology, or the science of life, is part of our daily experience. This video covers one topic that falls under ecology, a subfield of biology. Ecology studies how life is interconnected with one another. In fact, decisions you make on a daily basis can impact other organisms around you in many ways. Let's examine one of these issues a little bit more in depth. The decision to use a reusable bag when shopping. You are at the grocery store standing in the checkout line and a cashier asks you, do you want to purchase a reusable bag today? The way I see it, there are three ways to respond. A, yes, B, no, or C, have an existential crisis wondering if it's worth it. For the minority of you that chose option C, congratulations, you're in the right place. You are also in the right place if you answered yes and are now wondering what you're going to do with your 27th reusable bag that you will forget to bring to the store next time just like you have the previous 26 times. Let's start by exploring our options. At any grocery store we have our usual plastic bags, maybe they also have paper bags, and lastly we have our reusable bags. For the purposes of this we're going to be talking about non-woven polypropylene bags which is what most reusable bags are made out of. Let's assume that no matter what bag we use, we're just gonna use it once. Obviously, that's not the purpose of a reusable bag, but just bear with me. When a bag is manufactured, it takes materials, energy, natural resources, and a variety of other things. However, once a bag is made, its environmental impact is not finished. At some point, a bag may end up in landfill or recycling or be repurposed. And what happens when a bag is no longer being used is still an important factor to consider. So we'll be looking at the life cycle of any bag holistically. Let's focus on three ways that it affects our environment. Global warming potential, which is a fancy way of saying CO2 produced, energy usage, and fossil fuel depletion. A single plastic reusable bag costs about 0.2 kilograms of CO2 to produce. Your paper bag is about 0.8 kilograms of CO2, and your reusable bag is about 2.6 kilograms. For all us Americans watching this, one kilogram is about 2.2 pounds or about nine quarter pounders with cheese without the cheese bun or anything on it. The amount of energy it takes to make a plastic bag is five megajoules. Paper takes 23 megajoules and a reusable bag takes 53 megajoules. For perspective, 53 megajoules is the amount of energy it takes to overcook your 20 pound Thanksgiving turkey by 30 minutes or so, making it just slightly too dry for your mother-in-law to approve. The amount of oil a plastic bag depletes in its lifetime is about 100 grams. A paper bag depletes about 200 grams and a reusable bag about 1100 grams. 1100 grams is the same amount of oil that it takes to produce enough gasoline to travel four miles in a 2016 Ford Explorer or infinite miles in a Tesla, assuming you don't run out of battery. Now that you know this information, let's come back to the question at hand. How many times do you need to use a reusable bag to make it worth it? In comparison to a plastic bag, about 37 times. As a side note, I looked into cotton totes as well, and you need to use those 7100 times before it becomes worth it. What happens after you've used your bag of choice? Well, reusable bags can be, well, reused. In fact, I know of a reusable bag that has been in continuous use for over 10 years. Plastic or paper bags can be reused or repurposed as trash can liners, or if facilities exist, recycled. And paper bags can be composted or turned back into raw organic material. This is also known as dirt. However, the majority of plastic bags are never recycled. Waste management estimates that only 1% of the 100 billion plastic bags that Americans use in any year are recycled. This means that the rest are taking up room in landfills or littering our communities, oceans, and closets. Plastic bags take 10 to 20 years to break down, and in that time they leach microscopic plastics into the environment that can eventually work their way into our food and bodies. They are also suffocation hazards not only to us, but to other animals as well. The issue of which type of plastic bag to use at stores is one we face in today's society, and it's a pretty hot topic right now. Have you seen any of the headlines recently? There's a lot about plastic bag bans. Sometimes making green decisions isn't always straightforward. Whatever we choose to do, it influences the balance of life on Earth. Reusable bags take more energy to produce, but are more Earth-friendly in the long run. If you can remember to bring your bag with you to the store, that is. 
Plastic bags take little energy and money to produce, but shed microplastics, pose suffocation hazards, and tend not to be recycled, therefore end up as litter in our landfills. Sometimes it's hard to know what to do with this information. But the idea should be that whatever type of bag you have to try and use it as many times as possible and repurpose it if you can. Do you even need a bag or can you carry your items in your bag or purse that you already have with you? Or carry it to your car with your hands and then recycle. If you found this interesting and would like more content like it, I would recommend Biology Everywhere, a book about biology being, well, everywhere. You can order it using the link below.